Hi, I'm Channing McCorson, the container guy. Today, we're prepping this 20-foot one-time use shipping container for a customer modification. The customer was able to use our online planning tool, planmycan.com, to place the windows and doors exactly where they wanted them. After landing a deal on national television in 2011, where his team pitched their idea of modifying shipping containers, he went on to start his own business. Since then, he's completed thousands of container modifications for clients in every major industry. Now, he wants to teach you everything he knows about container modifications and accessories. Channing McCorriston is The Container Guy. In this container, we'll be installing a man door, a sidewall window, another sidewall window, and an end wall window. We'll also be lining the interior with strut channel and installing our container door flashing kit and wall flashing kit. One thing to note about our modular window and door frame kits is that they're corrugation dependent. They require outside corrugations on either side to be secured to the container. This allows the customer to move the window or door every 11 inches or 278 millimeters. We've already marked out the rough openings in this container, so the next step is to cut them out. Quick tip is to use a corded angle grinder with a six inch cutting wheel. We've tried everything from plasma cutters, torches, none of it seems to work. We always seem to resort back to just the nice clean edge that a six inch cutting wheel will give us. Make sure you refer to the rough opening dimensions provided to you with your window or door kit. It's extremely important, and I'll say it again, that your hole is marked out centered between two outside corrugations. One thing that's interesting about shipping containers is that the sidewall corrugations are different than the end wall. So a window that works well on the sides, like a 36 or 48 inch wide window, is not so good on the end wall where we use a 40 inch or a 60 inch window. For this customer, they've chosen the larger of the two, so we're using a 60 inch by 30 inch tall end wall window. Cutting out man doors or roll up door frames, you'll run into D-rings and so when you're going through and cutting with your six inch cutoff wheel you just sink it and go through as much as you can and then once you drop the panel you'll be able to come in here and clean up the rest and, and uh, get that out of the way. So we'll let the staff get at it, cut out these openings and we'll check in on them later. Okay, so we're back here now. Uh, we can see the guys have cut out uh, all of our openings. If you come take a look here, you can see the nice clean job that the angle grinder and six inch cutting wheel has done. It does leave a few burrs that need to be cleaned up, but all in all allows for a nice easy caulk job afterwards. Or uh, we also use a top bulb seal up in the top corrugation that rests against the header of our man doors, windows, and roll-up door kits and provides a nice clean seal. Here's our top bulb seal that I was talking about. This, it has little edges there that grab and hold the corrugations and it's very flexible so it allows you to, to round the corners on sidewall and end wall corrugations. And then the bulb itself squeezes. You wanna get about a 40 or 50% compression and that allows for the best seal on the headers. So just when you're spacing your rough opening, make sure to account for the extra opening distance. So yeah, it just snaps right in. It's easy, it just follows along with you. A really nice clean edge that it leaves you. Guys can actually do it along the side. There's some that doesn't have the bulb on it, or there's some that has the bulb on the side rather than the top. Take your knife, cut, you got cut in between. There's some metal supports in there that are kind of tricky to find, but clean that edge up. Here's our, uh, our window frame kit. It's really nice because this, this top flange actually gets up and, and holds the, the window in place once you lift it up there. What used to be a two to three man job, typically you can do by yourself. Yeah, perfect. Up at the top, see where that bulb seal is resting nicely on the header? Up and over, yeah. That's a nice finished seal, water doesn't get in there. All we have to do now is just silicone along the sides and 
uh, on the inside we can actually get the bottom edge there but this can's actually getting spray foamed as well so in addition to all this the spray foam definitely sealed it up. Yeah the windows uh, they're already pre laser cut holes here so all we have to do is just uh, drill the holes and then rivet it in. Simple as that. Put the other two windows in this container. Uh, we'll get a close up of this and just show you what they've done. We've riveted it from the outside and now we've siliconed all the rivets. We've also siliconed the rest of the window frame. Just make sure that no water could ever get in. That's a bit of an overkill just because we're spray foaming this can, but we wanted to show you guys how to do a proper job of it. Here's the, uh, the man door, the cutout down along the floor and you see here where the, the D-ring's been cut out so coming at it from this side you typically can get right through it if you have a, a new disc. Uh, one thing to note here is I'd like to see more of the weld left. The boys ground it down too low so our threshold plates actually sit on that and allow uh, that, that allows you know some, some durability just because we have the return folded downwards so if that weld would have been left there a bit more this threshold plate might not have felt quite as spongy when you're stepping on it, but we have a solution for that. So yeah, then we'll just rivet it in through the holes and install the hardware and away we go. Again, same as the windows, the door just installs with rivets. So here we have our, uh, our container door flashing kit. After we spray foam insulate, we can remove the side flashing, slide in a piece of plywood or drywall, and then reinsert that flashing, and now you have a nice, clean, finished edge. So this is the footer or header piece. It installs uh, down either at the bottom or top. There's just uh, self-tapping screws that go into these hollow rec tubes down at the bottom. And then, yeah, the same goes up top here. Yeah, that installs right up there, so that'll allow you to self-tap it up into place there. Once your headers and your footers are on, then you can install your side pieces. So when you're going to install the container door flashing the, the, the footer and header, you can use either uh, rivets or self-tapping screws, because you are going through this uh, hollow rec tube in the door, so you're not penetrating through the container. I'll throw this one in here. Just in place, then just finish her up all the way around and we'll get to the side pieces. Here's the, the side flashing pieces for our container door flashing kit. Uh, these, yeah, just set right in place here. You'll be able to uh, rivet them together in the four corners. And then along the side here, it's pre-laser cut with holes. And it's best to drill and rivet those just because the clearance is with the doors, but uh, it does clear self tappers as well. So here's the rest of the container door flashing kit. The guys got it all installed. It's all riveted along the side. And then we also have this uh, container wall flashing kit. This again retains the spray foam and give you a nice clean finished edge if you were to steel stud and plywood or drywall line the interior. It's also up here, top edge. And so again, we can steel stud across and you can tuck your plywood or drywall right on top of that. It's adjustable with the slotted bolt. container rather than a uh, steel stud frame we're actually going to be installing our uh, our CSM brackets so these allow us to install strut channel on the inside corrugations and then right now I'm just going to be marking out the container just uh, try to figure out where is best to put the strut channel because we have so many windows and doors so, so we got one here uh, I think we want to do kind of every second corrugation so we'll do another there and then here, and now we're at our man door. I've already marked uh, this side. I've got all the X's in place where the MCSM brackets are going. And then I'll jump over to the other side and explain why and where I put uh, This is where the door switch is gonna be. We need a strap that goes into the light fixture. This one here will catch the light fixture. Also get the other side of the light fixture. And we have a strap in between. Uh, Strap the conduit, and this one hits the light fixture. Four over was the other one for light fixture, so that goes across. And then here we'll actually put one to come down, but not across. 
So the reason why I'm coming down with the strut channel and not going across, we don't need it to strap the light fixture, but as we come down, if we have every second corrugation lined with strut channel, we can bolt uh, shelving brackets, fold down workbenches, uh, pipe racks. It's basically modular interior, so anything up and down, and you can fabricate whatever you want, bolt it in with quarter inch, three eighths, half inch spring nuts. It's a great system, it's like Lego for big kids. I'll try to hold this up here and demonstrate what that non-insulated position would look like. So if the strut was installed flush against the back wall, this would allow you to use a bolt and spring nut and hold the strut. So now there's, there's no clearance behind the strut and against the container corrugation. And it's a nice sleek finish where it doesn't really make the interior any wider. So it gives you your full interior width. I'm just going to take one of these apart just to show you the spring nuts. A lot of people haven't really used them before. It's just, yeah, a regular bolt. And then inside here, these, they, uh, the way that they're shaped, they go in and then you give them a turn and, and they lock into place. So, and the spring goes on the back just to kind of to hold it there. So it goes in and you turn, your spring nuts held, slider back, it's a threaded nut. Get your bolt started. And then yeah, the, the area that isn't it, it stops the spring nut from turning and so no need for a wrench or anything on the other side. This customer also requires passive ventilation, so we'll be installing a couple big air 45 vents uh, with the bug screen on them. Uh, once the guys are done installing them, we'll give you another closer look at how, how they go in and, and what they look like installed. The best part of a spray foam job is the prep work ahead of time. Uh, the reason we love our contractors, they do such a great job preparing the container for spray foam, minimize overspray. And so yeah, the more work you can do ahead of time to make sure the foam goes only where it needs to go, the better the finished product you can be with. I'll just walk you around quick. Uh, things to point out to your spray foamer. Around your windows, we'll be able to spray foam right up to the vinyl edge of the window. Give a really nice uh, vapor barrier. There won't be any steel condensating throughout the winter. You know, down at the floor where the CSM brackets are, that'll all kind of get covered. we will be doing you know, two inches of foam all the way around. Uh, the two inches that come from the inside corrugation will be pretty much flush with the outside of the strut channel. Same thing around the doors. Uh, just foam up to the door, they'll fill the header. The header will get filled right in with foam. With your container door flashing kit, you'll be able to fill the cavity with foam. The flashing itself will retain it. It's just a nice little gap where the rubber door seal is. Uh, the doors function just like stock uh, using this kit here. Other, other ways of doing it, sometimes people only fill this center cavity of the door and they, they don't spray foam the hollow tube just to make sure that they don't overspray on the, uh, the rubber door seal. But then this tube throughout the winter has no insulation value other than the air that's inside of it. And yeah, it just condensates frost up. Sometimes your doors, if it's you know, humid inside and everything can freeze right up. So uh, these flashing kits we love, they work great, retain all the foam inside and they are set up so that you can uh, still install a sheet of plywood or something and then finish the, the interior look of these doors afterwards and it's a very sleek look once it's all done. If you've never seen the underside of a shipping container, we'll give you a little peek here. So containers have a channel running the full, this is the 20 foot length of the container, then underneath about every 13 inches there's a horizontal or crosswise channel that runs the width of it then the underside is coated for insects and weather in this case we'll be spray foaming direct to that coating there's no issue there the uh, adhesion it, it works great and again uh, the, the forklift pockets on on both sides just be careful uh, make sure you talk to your spray foamer, let them know whether you do or do not want those insulated. Hey, we're here now with our spray foamers and they're just taping off all the strut and around the windows. So, 
on the vent here. You can see they taped off the front bug screen face. Uh, we can show you maybe later kind of how it all finishes up. The bug screen still removable. The windows behind us, we just take the front face of the window and allow the foam to come flush up to the edge of the vinyl. And that makes a nice uh, seal and paper barrier. The stock container vent, just so the foam doesn't uh, fly through them, we just give it a quick shot of tape and that'll be hidden and stay there forever. Here's one that's not done. We'll get that shortly. There they are, hard at work. The spray foamers have uh, finished up the job and cleaned everything up. You can see how nicely uh, the foam comes up against the Unistrut and allows you this beautiful uh, modular interior afterwards so we can now with spring nuts and bolts bolt anything to the wall still rather than have just a pure foamed interior so uh, fold down work tables shelving brackets pipe racks one thing you can see here in the fork pockets they've taped them off nicely and spray foamed uh, and filled up the fork pocket we are going to develop a galvanized patch that actually installs right over here and cleans that off nicely so you don't have to stare at the foam that's in the works right now and should be available shortly as you can see with our container door flashing kit the flange has retained the foam very nicely and it's a nice clean steel edge all along the container doors so these doors are going to function just like normal. I'll actually jump outside and open up the doors to show you guys how nicely they work. A lot of times, if you didn't use this, uh, the foam, like you gotta get in there with an X-Acto knife or something and try to really chip away at it. And it always seems like cam locks are, are heading into your keepers. You're really like, you can hear foam compressing when you try to close the door. So this just, yeah, makes it so easy, so nice and tidy. And uh, yeah, once we've done this once, we, we can never go back to the old way of spray foam and container doors. So we're kind of at an awkward height here, but I'll show you how easy it is to open these doors again. And so yeah, if anyone's had a spray foam container door before, you'll know it's usually not that simple. And even closing them. Where a lot of times it gets harder, it's still easy. Normally container doors are actually the handles are typically lower so this is similar height to what uh, a trailer or a container chassis would be and therefore uh, the, a lot of the door handles are lower so it's easy for the truck operator to open and close the doors. These one-time use containers they're built in China used once and the purpose of them is storage uh, in North America so we purposely put we call them waist height handles uh, it makes it yeah easier. You got more leverage when you go to open the doors uh, Once they're on the ground where they're gonna permanently lie So it makes it kind of awkward now that I have the container up for spray foam underneath to open but still Very simple to open. So we'll give you a final tour of the fit and finish of the spray foam around the vents windows and the man door so here this vent frame, for some reason, I got someone needed to clean it out or change the bug screen or something. You can still remove the bug screen, pull it away, do what you gotta do, and reinsert it. And here's the window, so the foam came right up nice and tight up against the vinyl window. It completely filled in the window frame. The window frame being processed sheet metal, there's no hollow section to the window frame so uh, there won't be any condensation coming into the inside of this container and essentially this whole container is like a, a giant cooler and it's going to be very simple to heat or cool. Here, here's the man door so the foam came up nice and tight against the frame. Again it's a folded sheet metal frame, no hollow sections so no areas of extreme condensation.
container, we're going to be securing all of our electrical to the strut. So, uh, yeah, in the next day or two here, our electrician will be showing up, uh, be putting lights, plugs, and a switch in the container, and, and we'll uh, give you guys an idea on how that all works. So here we have our power in plug. These are a really nice plug. It's uh, waterproof when you're not using it and allows you to fire this entire container using an extension cord. The power comes in from the outside into a box. Uh, this container is fired with just a single circuit of electrical, so an extension cord on the exterior will provide power to all the plugs, the switch, and eventually the lighting. So here we have uh, power in to the first receptacle and piped up to our switch and then conduit over to the LED lighting and the plugs. So there you have it, that concludes this project. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more videos, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them below. And also check us out at tcg.ca. Hope you learned something.